Hello, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Janardhanan from Sarver Heart Center Tucson, Arizona. Uh, today, we're going to discuss an interesting case of a prosthetic mitral valve obstruction where three dimensional transesophageal echocardiography helped us in making an accurate diagnosis. Our patient is a 55 year old morbidly obese female with obstructive sleep apnea and uncontrolled hypertension. She had further comorbidities with a history of prior stroke and a strong family history of coronary artery disease. She presented to our institution with increasing shortness of breath and exercise intolerance over a short period of two weeks. Her past medical history was relevant for a prior history of rheumatic heart disease resulting in severe mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation. Five years prior to her current hospital admission, she had a sternotomy and a mitral valve repair. Unfortunately, two years later, she presented to an outside institution with acute pulmonary edema, presumably from a failed mitral repair. At that institution, she underwent a repeat sternotomy, and she had mitral valve replacement with a 26-millimeter carbomedix valve along with a tricuspid valve ring annuloplasty. She was discharged home on Coumadin. Unfortunately, she was non-compliant to Coumadin while having a mechanical mitral valve replacement. During her current hospital admission, Physical exam revealed bibasal crackers, and there was a diastolic murmur heard at the apex. The exam was pertinent for the prosthetic valve clicks, not well audible. The INR on admission was clearly subtherapeutic at 1.2. Troponins were noted to be mildly positive. She had a transthoracic echocardiogram on admission which revealed elevated mean transmitral gradient of 24 millimeters of mercury. Based on the echo findings, the patient was transferred to CT surgery services with a plan to consider redo surgery. Prior to that, the surgical team wanted a coronary angiogram to evaluate both the coronaries as well as to look at the prosthetic valve. This video shows a loop from the cine fluoroscopy. What's striking is you can see here on the mitral prosthesis, only one of the discs is actually fully mobile, while the other disc is not opening or closing well. The tricuspid ring is also seen in, in the loop. She underwent a 2D TEE based on the observations on the cine fluoroscopy. What the two dimensional TEE shows is only one of the valve, one of the discs of the mitral valve is opening and closing, and you can see the turbulent jet of the mitral inflow. The other disc, as you can see on the left panel, is not opening, and there was a hazy op opacity noted on the atrial side of the disc that was not moving well. On the same 2D imaging, she had Dopplers done, and the Dopplers again confirmed or reconfirmed the elevated mean mitral gradient of 24 millimeters of mercury, almost identical to that noted on the transthoracic echocardiogram that was done prior. So based on the 2D TE findings, we had additional three-dimensional echo. This loop here shows a 3D view, an on force view of the mitral valve from the left atrial side. What you can see here is a prosthetic mitral valve and one of the discs that is opening and closing well. However, the other disc, which is not opening, had a structure on the left atrial side with a different texture, which was concerning for a thrombus formation. This slide shows a still frame from the on force view from the left atrial side. On the left, left panel is the mitral valve in the closed position, and on the right panel, the mitral valve in the open position. Again, 
there is a structure noted on the disc which is not moving, which is concerning for a potential thrombus formation. Following the TEE, there was a heart team meeting regarding the patient, and the patient was deemed to be too high risk for a third sternotomy with an STS score of 17%. Consensus was reached that the 3D TEE images were more consistent with thrombus rather than panis formation. We decided to attempt thrombolysis with systemic TPA. The patient received a total dose of 100 milligrams of TPA followed by intravenous heparin. There was a significant drop in the mitral gradient from 24 millimeter to 6 millimeters of mercury. Full excursions of the disc was confirmed on cinefluoroscopy. The next slide shows the loop from the cinefluoroscopy clearly confirming that the mitral discs are now opening and closing well. A few discussion points. Prosthetic mitral valve obstruction may be secondary to thrombus formation, panis in growth, or a combination of both. Acute prosthetic valve thrombosis is a potentially serious complication. For left-sided heart valves, the incidence is 0.1 to 6% per patient year. The mortality is high regardless of either emergent surgical or medical intervention. The major risk factors for prosthetic valve thrombosis are either inadequate anticoagulation therapy or a mitral location of the prosthesis. Both these conditions were true in our patient. The imaging modalities for diagnosis include cinefluoroscopy, transthoracic echocardiography, or CEE. Diagnosis by imaging can certainly be challenging. Transthoracic echo has limitations including poor quality of the acoustic window or artifacts associated with the highly reflective surface of the prosthesis. Two-dimensional TEE has limitations as well, including difficulty delineating the exact etiology of obstruction, whether it's panis versus thrombus, as well as difficulty delineating obstruction located on the ventricular side of the prosthetic valve. There may be additional difficulty differentiating small thrombi from sutures or strands. So in conclusion, acute prosthetic valve thrombosis certainly needs urgent intervention. Surgery remains the preferred intervention for left-sided prosthetic valve thrombosis. Based on the three-dimensional TEE findings in our high-risk surgical candidate, there was team consensus in the decision to attempt thrombolysis. The attempt was successful, and this avoided a repeat sternotomy in our high-risk patient. Our case highlights the critical role of three-dimensional transesophageal echocardiography imaging findings in making the accurate diagnosis of partial thrombosis on a mechanical mitral valve and subsequent successful non-surgical intervention. I thank you for your attention.